Oh, so good. So good. What is up, guys? Welcome back to the channel again. Welcome back to a new vlog, guys. If I look tired, don't judge me. Just like, don't judge me on drinking the, the monster. I know that it is super bad. We shouldn't be drinking this. But trust me, guys, if I don't drink this now, I think I won't make it throughout the day because I am super tired. If you guys follow the channel, you guys know that I just got to Miami. I unloaded this morning and I'm already here parked at my destination where the truck is always at next to the you know building and stuff like that. Just the usual. Anyways, this video, it's gonna be a video of a question that I get asked a lot. And that is, how much is it that I spent on doing the maintenance on the truck? Um, for example, you know, just a regular oil change, greasing up the whole truck and uh, doing and greasing up the whole trailer. But I'm also gonna include the maintenance on a, uh, on the, on the TK, you know, the Thermal King. You guys know that in this, in the, in my previous video, I wasn't having issues with my temperature, but I did notice that the unit was uh, was having a little trouble lowering down the temperature. And I got the code. I don't think I showed you guys, but I got the code of you know to check the freon. So I want to do you know I want to change my belts. I want to check the freon. I'm gonna you know I'm gonna do everything you know I'm gonna do everything that the maintenance require, you know, change the, the, the oil filters, obviously change the oil, the fuel filters, you know, just do everything. And I'm also gonna tell you guys exactly how much is it in labor, because I'm not gonna do it. You know what, I am gonna do, I'm gonna do some of the work. So I'm gonna show you how much is it I spend in, in parts and how much is it that I'm gonna spend in the labor when they come and they check out the Freon and stuff like that. And obviously inspect it, you know, to see if they find any big, uh, you know, any big concerns that we should be worried about. So, Nothing, ladies and gentlemen. With all that said, I hope you guys are doing good. And let's start this vlog. and the unit is looking good um he did say that i have my coil a little dirty nothing too too major but it is a little dirty i have to get that uh, cleaned up he is going to do it tomorrow and we came inside the unit as you can tell um the inside of the trailer is taken apart that big plastic part the aluminum parts that go there we took we took them apart as well i'll show you guys right here see the aluminum parts and um he found out that uh that my expansion valve is leaking. It's, it's, I think he said it was stuck in the, in the closed position. So what it's doing is that it's leaking. Let me show you guys. It's leaking the, the Freon and stuff like that right on the line. That's the expansion valve right up there. Not a lot of lighting right there. See? So it's, it's starting to leak. Let me see that right here. It leaks all over this. And then all this right here freezes up. So, yeah. You know what, I'm gonna start the unit so you guys can see the line that freezes up. I'm gonna start the unit so you guys can see it. It's not gonna harm it, but I'm gonna start it for a second so you guys can see the line that um that is freezing up. He said this is looks pretty good, it's not even bad, it's just a little dirty. We're gonna clean that out as well, but that looks good too. Um, oh, we're also gonna be replacing this uh, uh, air duct. I don't, know what, I don't know the correct name, but I know it's an air duct, you know, for the, the, the side, uh, for the air to cycle in the trailer, it comes out through here. Some of the newer trailers have have one on each side. They're smaller, but they have one on each side. This one has the big one in the middle. He said this is a good one. It's a little more expensive because they, have, they do have a cheaper one. He said it's up to me um, which one I want to buy. I'm going to go ahead and buy the same one. As you can see, this one has taken a beating already. And let me tell you guys, the way this is, is exactly how I got it. 
You guys know I, I take care of my stuff and trust me, the way is this is exactly how I got it. I just never changed it because it's been doing the job now, you know. But he said that it looks a little beat up, that it's, it's, it's time to retire it. So yeah, let me go start the unit so you guys can see the, the tube that that starts to freeze up. So I ran I ran the unit for a bit and you see how the lines start to freeze up. That's because right there, the expansion valve is right there, it's leaking all the freon out instead of pushing it in. See, everything is frozen. Look. See? Reefers are, reefers are complicated, guys. You know, and when, when you least expect it, they get you, you know? Thank God that everything, you know, everything in my delivery and stuff like that went, you know, went good and nothing happened. Because um, the last thing you want is for a load to get busted or something because your reefer went bad. It cools down, it just takes a long, long time. And that's because the expansion of, like I said, it's either, it's either not working properly anymore or oh, it's just broken completely it's just back completely i don't think it's back completely i just think that it's not working the correct way anymore you know it's about to go back completely but um yeah see all that stuff melted already new dryers on pressure is inside the system to see if there's any leakage inside Moving along pretty good, guys. See, my filter's already dirty, so I, I've got to change the fuel filter and stuff like that. I'm sure that's dirty too, got to change all that. We're looking good, we're looking good. Mine's wasn't bad, but a new one's always good. These battery terminal terminals are bad too. Gotta to replace those. Okay, so before this video continues, I wanna apologize. Due to privacy purposes, the gentleman who's working in my unit cannot come out in the video. I cannot give you guys any info on that. I know some of you guys would love to have that info, but trust me, I would love to give it to you, and I'm sure he would love for you guys to have it as well. But for privacy purposes, he cannot give you his info. Um, I'm sure we can find a way. If you guys really do need it, I can help you guys out. But let me think about a way, and then we'll figure something out. But I just wanted to apologize. I'm gonna to try to record as best as everything as I can there. Um, but there's things that I'm not gonna be able to record or only explain to you guys because he cannot come out in the video. Just wanted to apologize. And on the good side is that I'm working in the truck. Um, you guys know that I, you know, you guys know how I am. I'm a fan of cars and trucks and stuff like that, so I'm working on it. But I'm not gonna give you any info on this truck till I have everything set up and everything ready, so you guys can start seeing. All the videos i'm going to start putting out of this truck in a different page i don't want to mix this with the with the, with the trucking you know because some of you guys don't like it and in reality i understand that not everybody wants to see a car video in a truck channel that's cool so stay tuned to that as well so you guys can go ahead and support me as well another day here guys remember that before we get the day started that for privacy purposes i cannot you know put this info out there Trust me, like I said before, I wish I could. I am sure that he wished that he could do that as well. But due to his job, you know, he can't do that. Nothing, guys. I'm here waiting for him. He's not here yet. I'm waiting for him here. Um, so he can come and uh, finish installing everything inside, you know. We got to close up the unit and we're going to be installing the new air duct as well. That's pretty much it. Should be a very simple day. Should be a simple day. I know that the to install the air duct, it's not it's not hard, but it takes time, you know. But yeah, take a look at the shit that people do. You're supposed to use this, and they have a uh, what are these uh, bolts and nuts and whatever.
back here again at the unit. Okay, so now that we're all alone, we're gonna do the mains, we're gonna do the oil change, we're gonna change all the filters, air filter, diesel filters, and uh, oil filters, honestly. There is a little filter in here. The last time I did a video on this, I did not show you guys, because I didn't do it. Um, remember, I'm not an expert. I just try to you know, save money and, and do the best that I can. So there's a filter in here that, I, that the gentleman that was here, he just told me there's a filter in here that you gotta take out and you gotta clean it. It's like a screen, like a little screen filter, just like this one up here. Obviously this is big. The one that's in there is very, very small. Um, as soon as I take that off, I'm gonna show you guys how dirty this gets because it looks super, super dirty in there. So I'm gonna show you guys as well. Other than that, everything in the unit is perfect. The only thing that I am missing is, once I do the oil change, I gotta run it to put it on negative uh, minus 20. So in case you need more free on, I can come back tomorrow and refill it just in case. He's getting, he's, he says that right now it does not need free on, but you have to run it, you know, you have to run a very low temperature in order to figure that out as well. Uh, new belt guard, new belts are on as well. He did them in like 15 minutes. So now you know what it is, what it is. Um, he gave me a new dryer as well what else what else what else what else you already saw the inside that looks amazing inside looks very 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 good what else that's about it guys so let me start draining all this oil let me start you know doing this already and hopefully i can finish fast so i can make this unit run and see how everything performs new filter compared to the old one now remember guys out Damn, that shit hurt. But I remember that when you install these, um, this drain has to be facing down in case water goes in there, it can leak down. This goes right here. Very simple. Oh, that fell. Gotta fix to get that now. Right, hold on, give me a second, guys. I have one hand. So that goes in there like that. I gotta get a new uh I use these uh, tie wraps to tie everything up. Where's the thing at? Oh, here you go. This clamp holds it right here. That goes in there like that. And that's about it, ladies and gentlemen. I always put this, and I'll show you right now, once I'm done tying this up, I'll show you why I do this, because since this is plastic, these things tend to open up. So I always lock it in place with two tie wraps. So let me tie this up, let me lock this in place and I'll show you right now. I don't know if you guys can tell but the filter looks super dirty. Look at this, uh, whatever this is that came off of there. Piece of something. And check out how dirty, I don't know if you guys can see all the particles. That's how dirty everything it was in there because it wasn't like that. This bucket was clean when I uh, threw that diesel in there from the filter so all that you see there was inside the filters I have to wash this now make sure it's dry uh, what else I did up there that's closed so that we're good you guys can see the tie wrap filters go on the left side now I have to clean all this and make sure I refill my filter with a uh, diesel before I install this one right here this filter right here as well has to be filled with diesel so let me wash that do this and install it new filter have diesel inside uh, the original filter that goes that has to be clean I cleaned it now let's go up there hopefully I don't bust my butt coming up here and let's oh here I'm trying to show you see that's what I always do remember this has to be facing down I always do that, like I said, so this can maintain close. Now, let me pick up this filter while making a mess. Or trying not to make a mess. Let me install it up there. Make sure this is all the way in. Good. Once you clean it, the way I wash it, I wash it up with uh, water. Remember that. We've, hold on. You can wash your water, but you have to dry it before you reinstall it, guys. Do not reinstall wet. 
Give me one second. Back again. Here we go. This has to be hand tight. Not too tight. This is plastic. So if you guys squeeze it too much, you're probably going to end up breaking it. Especially this plastic has had a wear and tear, you know, with temperature and stuff like that. So you got to tie it up, but nothing crazy. That one's in. Now let's do the other one. Let me put this camera down again. And let's keep moving. Give me one second. Install, clean it up a bit. Let's hand tie it up a little bit. It's basic stuff, guys. Oh, I always do this as well. So, uh, diesel does not fall on this because it starts to fall on this, and with time, it starts to chew up. On that rubber filter key nothing crazy just a bit should be good let's clean it one more time now something you want to do to keep you know so you won't forget or so that you won't um, miss out on your due date is put a date on the filter put a date on the filter I don't have a marker here with me so um, I'm gonna I'm date it I'm not gonna date it I'm gonna keep track of this video and with, with the date of the video then I know when did I do it but date this don't forget to date your filters your maintenance guys you gotta date this very important now Let's drain our oil. I have my bucket down there. Let's drain our oil. Let me find a plier for this. Let's drain our oil and clean this filter in here as well. Before I continue, don't forget guys, I always do it. I always forget to show you guys. There's a kill switch right here on the T, T case. As you can tell, it's already down. Um, always, 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 always make sure to cut that switch off. Always, you always gotta make sure the last thing you want is to, to for this unit to turn on and uh something bad happen you know there are supposed to be before they turn on but you may be so concentrated on whatever you're doing that you, you're not you may not even hear it when it beeps so always make sure you you do that you know cut that switch off anyways another tip i find a clamp a hose so i could drain the oil that way you will not make a mess uh, let me take this thing off and let's start draining our oil See how handy the the hose is See how handy the hose is there you go <laughs> See no mess at all I always like to keep this as clean as possible because if not then this unit gets very dirty very disgusting quick Uh, this drained a bit. Let me drain it some more. All right, now that it drained a bit, I want to put it standing up somewhere where it is not going to drain. Uh, right here for now will work. That's fine. Clean this up a bit. Make sure to put oil inside your new filter. And uh, that's it. That's about it. Put it back on. Some people like to use different types of oil. This is this is what I use. Don't go by me. You guys can use whatever you guys like to use. This is what I use. 1540 Delo. All right. This is what I use. If you guys want to do this or not? It's up to you. But this is what I use. There you go, new oil. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let me see this right here for a quick second so I can take this rag out. You always want to grease up the gasket or the, you know, where it's going to go right here. Some people do it, some people don't. I like to do it. Give me one second.
okay yeah some people like to do it some people don't some people just like some people like to fill it up with oil some people don't like to fill it up with oil i like to do it i like to have the oil there already so i did mark my uh, my filter i don't have a marker so i have to scratch it a little bit but i'll be all right uh, there you go it's a little blurry but there you go 829 I did mark it. It's just gonna be a lot easier if I mark it than if I have to go back to the video and stuff like that. Let me get my filter tool. That should be enough. Still draining a bit, not too much, just a bit. Obviously, it's a little bit now, so you really can see a lot going down. But once you open that, there's a little key here that opens. All these little things, that key always gets lost. I have to replace that whole thing. Get yourself a, a pair of uh, needle pliers. There you go. Try that open. There you go. Crack it open so you can put in a new oil. Almost empty. Now my next step is, let me get, I think he said a 17 meter meter. So I can loosen up this boat so I can clean that filter in there. Let's go for it. Okay, so I got it out. Here you go. To the little mesh that's inside the boat. Make sure that you don't lose your uh, bronze washers he gave me some extra ones he told me if you've never done it or if you have you know in case you lose them he gave me two extra ones but I, I didn't lose any of them so there's one in there and then the one that goes there i have it right here so i'm gonna go ahead and wash this and uh yeah reinstall everything after i do that for sure for sure i'm gonna have to prime it i have to look for a line because i forgot which one was it but if i'm not mistaken i think it's this line right here you have to break you have to crack this line open so you can prime it once you have diesel here, then you tie it up. But I'm gonna show you that as well. All cleaned up. It wasn't that bad to be honest. I'm here tying it up now. A little mission, but be alright. Should be good enough. Don't forget guys, you gotta use those bronze washers. If not, you're gonna have air in your lines. Now this is done draining. We should be good to go. Let me close this right here. I gotta get one of these brand new things. There you go. It's just a little thing that hooks up to a key that you're supposed to turn but I can't remember when I got this trailer if I already had if the key was there or not I think the key wasn't even in there so yeah okay, it should be all right yep it's close you just put the rag here so the oil will not fall this I can clean right now or later throw this right here I'll pick it up later. It should be close enough, but I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna stick this in there so I can pick up all the extra oil so I can look good. Yep, the little little thing in there is closed, the little ball that it turns. <clears throat> redo it again that should be good yeah we're good that's good all right 
Now I'm gonna fill this up with oil and uh, give her the switch to see if uh, she wants to start. If she doesn't want to start, I'm gonna prime it because most likely is that the system got air in it. So let's put some oil in here and let's continue. Okay, so here's the boat that I took out that goes on the line. And this, this is the little filter that goes inside. I'm gonna, you know, I took it off obviously. It's uh, so I can clean it. Looks like hell. I don't want to have nothing. I'm, I'm this far into the, you know, into the unit with doing all the means. Why not do this? It's just a, a boat and a filter, you know. So I'm gonna clean this and put it back again. Okay, here you go. All cleaned up. Don't forget your washer. You have one over here, and the other one is right here. Don't forget to put it in, guys. If not, you're gonna be stuck. Let me put this camera down so I can put these washers and start, you know, bolting that up again. Okay, so when you catch air in your system and your fuel lines, that's the nut that you're supposed to loosen. As you can tell, I already cracked it open. I don't know if you guys can see that in the image or not. It's, it looks a little wet. And that is because I cracked it open. I'm going to do it again. Uh, hold on. Okay, there you go. You see how it's coming out? You see how it's fuel coming out? Okay, I'm going to close it fast because I don't want... See? See how it drains? Look, I don't want to... I don't want it to, you know, to, I don't want a lot of fuel to come out and to cat. I don't want a lot of fuel to come out and to capture air through there. So I'm going to tie it up already. Okay. That should be all right. If once I hit this switch now, it doesn't, it catches air or air is in it still. Then I have to go back and redo the same thing again after I prime it. So switch is on. Should be good to go now. If everything works out good, then we're golden. That's good. That means there's no oil leaking. That means that is still working perfect. Um, what else? We'll see. There was fuel there, oil here. Should be good. Pretty simple, guys. Pretty simple. So you can hear when it's about to start. I don't know if you guys can hear that the little click 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 sound but you can never be too too sure let's see anytime now <laughs> see be you can hear that noise right but you can be so entertained doing what you're doing that you may, you may miss the noise. Maybe the unit you're working on doesn't have the noise, you know? There you go, see? How it cut off. It was good, but it cut off because you have a... It's gonna try to start again. Let me see if I can prime it. Maybe by priming it will work. We have air in the system. That's normal for it to happen, you know. So yeah. A lot of air. Once you start priming it, this is going to start to fill up, you know, or your drain or whatever you call that in there. It's going to start to fill up, you know, and once the unit starts, this is going to get hard. It's going to be harder for you to prime. That's normal as well, too. Let's see if it works now. Yeah, I got a cold, obviously, right? I feel... <laughs> It cranked right up because it's still hot in the lines, you know, it had fuel in the lines, but.
Give me one second guys, let me go down there to see what's going on because it doesn't want to start now, hold on. See, it says engine stop, clear. No alarms, white light. Well, we know our engine stopped because obviously there was no fuel, right? Now, if it does it again, then I have to redo my process again till um, all my uh, air is out of the system like i said that is something normal that could happen to anybody usually it does happen because you you, you take it off your fuel filters and stuff like that literally normal i've done it when i've done sometimes when i've done uh, service i've done that and um i've had to do it like three or four times believe it or not you know because i don't do it right the first time see there you go same process so now i have to redo the whole, the whole thing again i have to Cut it open, prime it again, and make sure that, um, see, alarm. Engine stop, yeah, we know that, all right. So let's turn it off for now. So we gotta do, like I said, the same thing again. We gotta prime it, the whole nine yards. You can do that process maybe two or three times with no issues at all. Something very normal. Okay, so I've done it several times. I'm pretty sure it's gonna start now. You can tell it's, it's full of a little bit of diesel here because I uh, you know took off the air of the system by this bolt right here so I'm pretty sure it should start now without any issues at all uh, yeah I was just trying to show you guys let me put this in because there's pressure here already I was just trying to show you guys how to take out the si the air of the system you know with basic tools if you don't have nothing like if you don't have a a line with air where you can blow the tank so you can get the pressure of the fuel in here then that's one of the things you have to you can you have to do you know prime it and just crack it open right here this bolt right there right there so all the pressure all the air whatever's inside can come out so let's start it now i did have to do it four times four times that only tells you that you know, a lot of air went inside the system. But, I mean, it is what it is. If this time doesn't work, then I would have to do it a fifth time. Hopefully, this time will work. I've seen people that do it up to seven times, you know. Because it's just, it's not, you know, it's not enough pressure. There's too, too much air inside. Oh, well, here you go. I showed you, right? But just in case you didn't capture uh, the date, you can barely see it. I'm pretty sure it's gonna work this time, but I like to be uh I like to be for sure for sure before I <laughs> tell you guys, you know. Oh yeah, we also got a we didn't get a new one. He made a new uh battery terminal as well. For the positive because the negative was good, but the positive was bad. After this starts, I'm gonna run it. I'm gonna run it minus
I was saying, I'm gonna run the unit, make sure that it goes below zero, make sure that I don't get any more alarms, any more codes, to see how it performs. Um, if it takes too, too long, he told me, the gentleman that was here told me to let him know, because maybe it needs Freon. He said that he checked it, it doesn't seem like it needs Freon now, but sometimes the Freon it may have, it may only be good to cool down to maybe 10 degrees, you know, you never know. You have to run it down below negative 20. SB230s um, supposed, are supposed to go up to negative 20 degrees. So he told me, leave it on negative 20 to see if it goes. If it doesn't go, then let me know what number it is, because maybe it might need a few pounds, maybe one or two pounds to free on. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to run it and, and see what what, um, what happens. I don't know if you guys saw one of the previous clips, but when we were washing the coil up there, I don't know if you guys saw how filthy and how dirty that thing was. Ridiculous, ridiculous dirty. I used to wash it, but I've never washed it and, and taken out so much dirt. So I'm gonna start doing it more often, you know? Especially with all the creature and all the debris going on from the road that goes up there. It's just incredible, it's crazy, crazy. No, men, yo tengo trabajo mañana y el miércoles temprano en la mañana. Para mañana yo estoy libre tal vez después de las 12. Tal vez. Pero tengo que para mañana hasta después de las 12 estoy libre. Yo lo llamo en un rato. Yo lo llamo de vuelta. Okay. So I've been running the unit. Obviously, it's the next day. I've been running the unit for like an hour and a half now. Um, I had the gentleman come and check the Freon again. He said the Freon is good. He just left. I just finished engaging the truck to the trailer again. And I've had the unit running for like an hour and a half now. And let's see uh, what temperature is on. I don't know if you guys know or not, but TK lowers temperature less than a, than a carrier does. A carrier lowers the temperature a lot faster. So let's go see what, you know, let's go see how low is the temperature. I do have it set to like negative three degrees. Um, when I started up, it was like at 88 degrees or something like that, so let's see how low it is. Hopefully it's low. a little lower than zero degrees so like I said what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna wait a little longer to see uh, how low does it go I do have it set to negative three degrees once that gets to that temperature if it does I'm gonna lower it a little more to see how low I can make it go I mean as long as I can make it go to zero degrees I should be all right with any load right doesn't matter if you're zero degrees or if you're ten degrees in my opinion I know that some shippers want you to put the load um, at you know minus 10 or minus 15 or something like that something ridiculous like that and I want you guys to keep in mind something reefer units are not made to lower temperature they're made to maintain temperature um, believe it or not when you put hot product inside you try to lower the temperature that is super super harmful 
uh, for the reefers. Trust me, guys. I'm not saying I know everything, but that's you know that's the information that they have given me of you know people that that I know that you know they, they work that are certified in, in thermal king and and carriers and in units. You know they're certified. They're not just any other driver telling me this info. No, I'm not saying that not only the other, ah, I'm not saying that other drivers cannot know the info, but um, you know I get this info straight from the source. You know it's not like just anybody, um, and they're not made. And if you think about it, it's, it's logical. They're not made to lower temperature. They could lower temperature, but it should, it's gonna take a while. Uh, units are made, I repeat, units are made to maintain temperature, not to lower. Obviously, um, if you get product at 40 degrees and they want, it to, they want you to run their unit at 33, eventually it's gonna, you know, put that temp, it's gonna put that, that a product at 33 degrees, but it's, it, it may take a little longer. Sometimes if you put, for example, avocados or lemons or something like that that came straight out of the farm it, it could take one or two days to put that product at a low 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 temperature you know it could uh due to just the way the the way it works you know it's just that's just the way it is anyways enough of the talking i'm gonna wait a little longer to see how low can we drop that temperature and i'll show you guys and as soon as we drop it low then i'm gonna open the doors i'm gonna show you guys how the air duct looks the air duct looks real real good real real nice it is like i said in one of the previous clips it is an original tk air duct and you're gonna see that it's not right in the middle in my unit it's not right in the middle and that's because the 230s have the hole where where, where you know where air duct goes slight to the right it's not right in the middle whatever i had before was not the original that's why it was never hooked up in the front. It was not original, it was something they just put on there just to sell the trailer. And, you know, it is what it is, you know. So as soon as that is, is good to go, I'm gonna show you. So, five degrees. Negative five degrees. I don't know, but that's pretty good for 2013. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I'm not gonna keep on forcing it, I have to go now. I think negative five degrees. I don't usually um, load, like I said, I don't usually load, what do you call it, I don't usually load frozen and stuff like that, so I think that negative 5 degrees is plenty for me, it's that point, let me lift this temperature up so I can shut this unit down, I can go back there and show you guys how that is looking, put it at 40, so just so I can shut it down, put it at 50. Yeah. New set point is programmed. Boom. All right. That's it. Shut down. So currently, my unit has negative five degrees, guys. That's that's beyond frozen. Let me show you guys how that is looking in there. I also want to show you how the air duct looks. Ah, oh, man, I'm so tired. this all the humidity look at that man it feels good it definitely feel good so there's the tart for the new air duct as you see it's not a regular one it has clips right there right there right there because it has a mesh right there it's not a lot of lighting in here now so I won't be able to show you anyways but I'll show you on the next video. Look at the big cloud of smoke. <laughs> Man, that's cold. Shit. That's cold. All right, guys. That's going to be it. I'm going to take a second to end the video here. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys learned something. I know that a lot of you guys know all this simple stuff, but this video, I want to say it's more for like the new guys that are learning, they wanna get into the reefer game and stuff like that. Maybe you're not new, maybe you've just been hauling all your life, um, you know, flatbed or a dry van and stuff like that, and you wanna start getting into the reefer game. These are just some of the things you have to think about when you're driving a, a reefer trailer. I wanna take a quick second and thank you guys all for the love, for the support. Don't stop, that only motivates me more and more to 
keep pushing videos out for you guys if you guys have not subscribed do so now it doesn't cost anything and it helps me out a lot with all that said thank you guys so much for watching peace and keep on trucking